Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Okoyemi Goddess. If you're new to this channel, you're very much welcome. On this channel, I talk about my life in the UK as an immigrant, as a nurse. I talk about lifestyle, relationships, and pretty much everything fun. If you like any of these things I've mentioned, please do all subscribe, like, and share. And if you're a returning subscriber, guys, you already know how much I love you, how much I celebrate you, and how much I appreciate you guys. So thank you for always returning to my channel and yeah i love you <laughs> so today guys i'll be talking about money saving hacks for new immigrants in the uk you guys know that i'm also a new immigrant so i have a lot of tips you know that i can always share with you guys and today i'll just be you know teaching you how you can actually save money if you're coming into the uk newly and you don't have so much money to squander or you even have so much money but you you just want to save you want to be moderate and yeah and conservative so i will just be sharing tips and hacks on how you can save money as a new immigrant in the uk so let's just get started first on my list is actually saving on accommodation so how do you save on accommodation if you're a single person and you don't have dependents why do you want to live in a two bedroom house why do you even want to live in a one bedroom house i mean when you're starting off you want to be a bit stable before you start living large in court so i would advise if you're single start with say a shared house so i explained what a shared house means in the video i made about cost of living in the uk if you've not watched the video i will probably leave the link somewhere up here where you can watch so in a shared house you have like different rooms in a shared house you have your room to yourself but you share the amenities in the house so say the kitchen you share that toilet and bathroom you share that as well so i feel like if you're single and or if you're coming alone at first to the uk start out with a shared house you can actually save a lot of money by living in a shared house because it's actually cheaper living in a shared house than living in a proper apartment and then say you can do that for like six months or even one year you save a lot of money and then you can move to a bigger apartment if you're not single if you're married or you have a partner but you don't have kids you can also say you can actually stay in a shared apartment so for some landlords they would even specify that couples are actually allowed and some will specify that couples are not allowed so if you find a house where the landlord has already stated that couples are actually allowed so you can actually stay in such shared houses as well this is just something for the interim it's not like you want to live in a shared house forever but you have plans you want to save as much money as possible so that is also um, a good way to save money but then if you have kids you may not be able to live in a small apartment you might be you know required to live in a bigger apartment but don't even go beyond don't go beyond your means so for instance you have say two two children and both of them are of the same gender just get a two-bedroom apartment you and your your spouse would stay in one room the other the kids if they're of the same gender can actually stay in the other room so why do you need a three-bedroom house don't forget this is just for the time that you're starting off after spending like one year in the uk when you're more stable when you're balanced when, when you've actually settled in properly then you can move to something bigger or somewhere bigger so that's actually a money saving hack look for a smaller accommodation when you're coming in newly and then as time goes on when you're very much settled you can move to a bigger apartment the second on my list is the fact that you can save on transportation so if you've been watching my video right from my videos rather from when i started if, you, if you've been following me on this channel from when i started i remember i made i did a vlog when i started newly about a day in my life as a tetanus so in the video i remember i can still remember vividly that i mentioned how i used to walk walk to walk like i will re well okay back home we say trek <laughs> so yeah pretty much how i used to trek to work you could yeah but the thing is i was actually trying to save as much money then now i don't i really honestly now i really walk to work a lot of times i take uber or i take um taxi to work i don't even run after the bus anymore and that's because i feel like i may be more settled now i may be more settled well financially and of course mentally and all that as well so now i take my time at home i don't have to leave home very very early like i used to do now i just leave home like 15 or 20 minutes before my resumption time because i'll just order uber or take a taxi but when i came in newly i'm still new in the uk i know but when i came in newly newly <laughs> like when i was so very much new i was always like um i would either walk 
or even take the bus so save on transportation by taking the bus this is not the time that you want to start ordering uber calling a taxi and all that there's still time for that but you know that for six months when you're still settling in if the distance is not so far you can walk um home home to my place of work is about 15 minutes walk 15 or 15 minutes 15 minutes walk and i used to walk so it, it was also a form of exercise for me and it was also like a time for me to pray as i like in the morning i like to pray in the morning so i would actually just pray and walk you know at the same time so for me it was more like a time for my personal devotion so to say but it doesn't have to be the same for you like so when you're starting off please if you can walk to your place of work to your workplace please do if you can take the bus please do and then very much later when you're set so you can even start um your driving lessons like i am doing right now and um i have i have my dri um, driving um test very close anyways so that's how you can save on um transportation also about transportation don't feel too big to ask for rides you may be a very i mean you may be very wealthy back home like you're a big man back home or big madam back home but when you're here don't be too proud to ask for rides for the first six months after i resumed my job a colleague of mine used to come and pick me up and then drop me off you know after work like she was very kind to me and if i did not ask her she wouldn't have even known that we because we live in the same neighborhood but she wouldn't have known if i was for me like big girl blah 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 she wouldn't have known that because we're actually neighbors she lives like four or five houses away from me so if i wasn't open enough to ask people i was actually just asking people at work like who lives um at so -so -so street and all that because i really just wanted to know who lives in my neighborhood and who could give me a ride even to now a lot of my colleagues colleagues give me rides from time to time like they will just drop me off at home even those that don't live in my neighborhood at times they drop me off at home they're just very kind but if i was feeling so proud nobody would volunteer to give me a ride so please don't feel too proud when you're near in the uk this is the time to accept a lot of free rights as possible like whoever volunteers to drop you off at home or even to pick you up at home don't don't feel too big my my husband's um colleagues too there are times they will come and pick him up from home there are times they will drop him off at home like People are always willing to help, but if you keep to yourself, if you're forming big man or big lady or big madam, nobody would help you. So please, you can save on transportation by accepting free rides from friends, neighbors, and um, colleagues at work. Okay, so the next is to save on feeding. So how can you save on feeding? It is actually cheaper. We all know this, even from back home, it is very, very cheap. Or should I say cheaper? It is actually cheaper when you cook your meals than buying already made food. So... If you buy your foodstuffs yourself, if you can actually prep and then cook your meals, it is actually cheaper. This is a no-brainer. We all know this. And this is not just about the UK. This is something that applies to everywhere in the world. So if you are um, looking at how to save money on feeding or how to cut some costs, please consider cooking your own meals. And um, yeah, just prepping your meals and cooking your own meals. I'm not saying you shouldn't um, take out meals or, or go to a restaurant or, or have fun. No, you should, but let it not be like something you do every day. Don't eat out every day. Try to cook as much as possible. A lot of times, in fact, 99.9999% of the time, we actually cook. We cook at home. But of course, there are times we actually just um, take out. Uh, we do takeouts, we do takeaways, and sometimes we eat in restaurants, but it is not common. It is not a normal thing for us. We do that when we just want to rest from cooking. So try and imbibe that um, a bit as well. And of course, you can also shop in the evening. So for most supermarkets, they bring down their prices in the evening, and that's because they just want to sell those stuffs. Like it's already evening, they will be closing in in maybe a few hours and they, they they just want to sell as many things as possible so if you shop in the evenings you realize that prices are always a bit lower in the evening than in the morning try it just go to any supermarket in the evening you know rather than going in the morning you will find out that some things are actually a bit cheaper in the evenings than in the morning so that's actually how you can actually save on feeding okay my next point is um buying in bulk you know rather than buying single item so for instance a lot of times you would realize that when you go to shops they would say that um one they will sell one for say okay i'm trying to create a scenario so you could say one for two pounds but two for three pounds or two for 2.5 pounds g get and then one for two pounds so one for two pounds or two for three pounds so usually this is how the price are things in most supermarkets or most shops so if you buy in bulk you would be you'll be able to save more money so 
a lot of times we buy in fact, in fact we buy a lot of things in bulk toothpaste you know a lot of these things we buy them in bulk because it's actually cheaper so imagine if one item will go for say three pound but if i buy two it will go for say four pound so i mean it's a, it's a no-brainer you should buy two rather than one so try as much as possible to buy in bulk rather than buying single items you would be able to save you know, it might be 50p here, 50p there, 10p there, 20p there. By the time you calculate all, all the amount you've saved, you will realize that you've been able to save so much money just by buying in bulk. Okay, next is saving on clothing. So how can you save on clothing? You can save on clothing by doing charity. Not like doing charity, buying from charity shops. <laughs> so charity shops, ah, thank God for ch charity shops. Guys, see when you come to the uk this is not the time i mean when you're new this is not the time to start forming big charity shops are amazing shops like you find a lot of lovely pieces lovely um, items and nobody will know that you got them from charity shops i mean people it is not it's not a thing of it, it, i mean it is not something demeaning you know buying from ch charity shops is not something demeaning I mean, it's not something that you hide away from and be like, oh, no, you don't want people to, to, you don't want people to see you in charity shops. No, there's nothing like that. So if you want to save on clothing, go to charity shops. And you know the way they use their clothes. It's not like people use their clothes and then the clothes are torn and then they take them to ch charity shops. No, most of the clothing you find in charity shops are actually very good cl clothing. I remember if I find a picture, I'll put it here. And I'm sure you guys will never believe that I got this coat. Quote from a charity shop i'll leave i'll look for the picture and actually put it somewhere on the screen for you guys i bought the coat from a charity shop and it was i think about eight pounds or seven pounds maybe seven pounds or seven yeah i think maybe seven pound fifty or something roughly eight pounds and the real cost of of the coat i think it's an h and m coat i would i would i'll look for the details, uh, details and just put the picture somewhere here and um the real i mean the real price like if i was buying the new coat would cost me almost 100 pounds and i got it for eight pounds and it was it was okay it looked like a brand new coat so please when you're starting off newly in the uk shop from charity shops also shop from low-end shop so i know a lot of people like iron brands blah 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 it is very good i do that I've, do i even do iron brands i don't think i no i can't even say do iron brands i still do not do iron brands start with low-end brands start with primark i'm a primark girl i like everything primark i don't i don't live beyond or above my means so please when you're starting off you want to save as much as possible nobody knows what brand you're wearing it's not like you're going to the red carpet where they will say who are you wearing you know how they say who are you wearing on the red carpet Nobody is asking you who are you wearing or what are you wearing. Nobody is asking you that. You will get nice pieces from Primark. So if you're coming to the UK newly and you want to know where to buy clothes from, trust me, go to Primark. You find cheap, affordable clothing from Primark. From charity shops, you find cheap, affordable clothing from charity shops. And they're all lovely pieces. I, I'm not talking about one out clothes and all that. Primark sells new things anyways, but for charity shops, they're like fairly used um clothing but for primark they sell brand new beautiful pieces i buy majority of my things from primark trust me and there are other low-end brands as well that are actually very affordable you can order i order from sheen i order from boohoo i order from those online shops that online stores or shops whatever that are not so expensive so imagine buying buying a blouse for 100 pounds from a particular high end brand and i can use the same 100 pounds to shop for like 10 blouses <laughs> or maybe not 10 blouses maybe like five or seven blouses from a low-end brand so consider that please that would help you to save a lot of money my next point is that you can actually save on bills so bills like energy bill um water bill your water bill your energy bill and your gas bill so all these bills you can actually save money on them so how do you save money on them by being prudent don't be wasteful like for instance um using light saving bulbs you guys know like light saving bulbs using like light saving bulbs alone will help to bring down your energy bills so if you can find a way of getting um, um energy saving bulbs that would actually help you a lot turn off all your appliances when you're leaving home or when they are not in use so you're, you're leaving the house or even if you're in the house where you're not using that particular appliance turn it off from the plug itself not just from the appliance but from the plug itself the socket 
turn it off so that it doesn't consume energy so that's actually another way you can save on your energy bill and also try and buy um, energy efficient appliances so don't be stuck with old very old appliances because they actually sap a lot of energy but newer appliances very efficient appliances will save you on your energy bills as well and as per water you can use trust me you can use a bowl in your kitchen rather than running water through the tap every time get a bowl and fetch water into a bowl so that when you are rinsing you can actually rinse your your used plates in that bowl and then trash it and get another get fresh water into the bowl again when you want to shower rather than using the shower you can actually use a bucket that way you'll be able to save money on water guys i'm saying this because you, this is a starting phase for you as you progress in your career as you settle in properly you can decide to you know you know spend money as you want and and all that but you know because you're still new and you want to save a lot of money these are ways that you can actually save um, money so don't forget for energy try and get um energy saving bulbs or energy saving light bulbs be very very prudent don't be wasteful don't just turn on appliances without using them turn them off when you're not using them so that would actually help you you know to save money on your bills it's another way to save money in the uk as a new immigrant is actually to buy during sales guys i'm always looking out for sales like a lot of times my husband and I will be like, when is the next sales? When is the next sales? Like, we're always looking out for bargains. We're always looking out for deals. We would actually need something, but we'd wait till when sales come up so that we can buy during sales. Even if even if it will cost us maybe just ten pounds lesser. Ten pounds is a lot of money. So wait for when sales will come up. You really need something urgently. If it's something that can wait. I mean, if it's not something that's life threatening. If it is something that can wait, wait till the next um, time that sales will come up, like Boxing Day sales, November sales. I'm always waiting for November sales for appliances, especially. So don't be in a rush when you need something. If it is something that can actually wait, then wait till when sales come up. Another thing is that in the UK, we do, or they do, <laughs> they do boot sales. So boot sales, how do I explain boot sales? So more like you have things in your house that you don't like anymore, or you want to replace those things. So there's like a large space people just go there mostly on weekends saturdays and sundays very early in the morning people just park their cars and then in their booths there's, they display you know all the things they want to get rid of and then they just sell them at a very very cheap rate like they sell them at a very very cheap rate and then at the end of the sales like when it's like towards the end of that day when they can still not sell off all those appliances or all those items most times you just leave it there because they don't want to take those things back home you, you guys know how much brits don't like junks and they like buying new things every time so even if you go there later like in the evening you might find some things there that people were not able to sell and they just don't want to take those things back to their houses they will just leave them back so boot, look out for boot sales in your neighborhood and then guess what? A lot of those items are actually brand new items. So someone might buy a new, say a new food processor. I might not like it. Or maybe some she bought one and then someone gifted her another one. She would rather just sell one of those food processors in a boot sale rather than, you know, just ordering the other food processor. So that's just an example. So a lot of times you would even find brand new items, not even used items in boot sale. So when you get to the UK, for instance, just type on Google boot sales near me. Once you're able to find the nearest boot sales to you. In fact, you can buy your furniture. Like if you want to furnish your house, you can buy your furniture, your cooking appliances, your kitchen appliances, and basically everything to just set up a new home. You know, when you're still new in the UK, you can find them in boot sales and even charity shops like um, British Art Foundation. There's this other cancer research um um charity shop the st luke's um charity shop they have a lot of charity shops that sell furniture and other home appliances as well okay, another way you can actually save money as a new immigrant in the uk is by claiming royalty points or getting a reward card so what i do or what i've done so far or what i still do my husband and her is that for every shop that we go to regularly we get their reward card so a reward card is just like a card I wish if I find a picture, okay, I'll just take a picture of one of my reward cards and then I'll just put a sample of what a reward card looks like. So for a reward card, how it works is that for every time you shop in that, it will be registered in your name and then you have your details on the reward card. It will be registered, your name, your email address and yeah, yeah, just your name and your email address and maybe your phone number. 
So anytime you shop in that particular shop, you get points on that card. And then every time you shop with that same card in that same shop, you get discounts. It might just be 50p discounts. It might be one pound discount, but you get it regularly every time you shop in that shop. <laughs> Or every time you buy something from from that shop, like I'm a regular um customer in, in Superdrug in um, the perfume shop because that's where I buy my perfume from. Superdrug, um, um, Holland and Barrett. That's where I get my Holland and Barnet something. That's where I get my supplement and my herbs from. So that Boots as well, Boots Pharmacy. So the Tesco. So those kind of um shops. Just get, when you just walk into the shop, get a reward card. Especially if you know that you'll be going there often. Like, like for instance, like Superdrug, I go there like almost every week or every other week to buy something. So those kind of shops, I have all their reward cards. So I get loyalty points every time I shop there. And then that gives me discounts every time I shop there. I hope that makes sense. So that would help you to save some money. There are times I go to Superdrug to buy things. The items in total might be worth, say, £8. And eventually I might just have to pay, say, £6.50. So because of the points I've been able to accrue over time, I get I get discounts whenever I shop there. So that's what that is all about. Okay, so the next on my list is actually the fact that learn to haggle price, learn to always negotiate. So I know that from what we've we've come to understand in 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 a long time, a lot of us it's actually a misconception actually. A lot of us think that oh abroad people don't haggle prices abroad. It's only back home that we haggle prices. It's only back home that we negotiate and all that. Air air as well in the UK and of course abroad you can also always haggle prices. Now I'm not saying you go to the supermarket and say ah she she made jigba ten pounds you know of course you can't do that because those ones are fixed. But there are some things that are not fixed that you can still negotiate and haggle the price like say you want to get an accommodation and the landlord says oh i'm, I'm giving out this flat for say 800 pounds or 1000 pounds you can still negotiate like oh can i pay say say the landlord says oh i'm giving out this flat for 1k 1000 pounds can i pay 950 can i pay 970 can i pay 900 so you can still have good prices here in the UK. You can still negotiate. Of course, you can't negotiate on all on all um, items, but there are still things that you can actually negotiate about or haggle the price. So yes, don't forget that you can always haggle some some kind of product. You can actually haggle the price. So don't don't think that oh abroad they don't negotiate though. they don't neg whatever the price is that's what you pay no that is actually wrong okay so the last on my list this is the final point i'll be making is the fact that as an immigrant you might want to <coughs> let me clear my throat as an immigrant you might actually want to consider thrifting we call it a job back home or which other word isusu yeah i know is it Igbo? i think Igbos call it isusu but generally we call it a job so which is also called thrift or thrifting you may want to consider that guys this is this, this is very very good <laughs> if you've been doing this back home then when you come to the uk please continue to do it it helps a lot i mean you want to start a project you want to do this you want to do that it's been helping people doing that job thrifting say so, so okay for people who don't understand what this is so it's like a group of friends a group of people come together and they make monthly contribution and then they take turns in collecting the money so if you if you're like say four people or five people every month say you'll be contributing 500 pounds so for four people so it means every month each of you will take two thousand pounds home every month and then you just take turns it feels it feels to because i've heard few brits say but it's still your money so why why are you sharing it like why are you taking turns when you can actually just leave the money in your account but I always tell them that there's just this thing about thrifting. I, I really don't understand how it works, but it just helps you to save a lot better than leaving the money in your account. So please, as an immigrant, especially if you're from Nigeria, please try to get few friends, few colleagues, just find people around, trusted people around you and come together and then save money together like we like we do back home at Jaw. It's just so trips. Please just do that. It will help you to save a lot of money. Yeah, I think I've exhausted my list. If I remember other things, I might just put in the description box. If you've been in the UK for a while and you're an immigrant like I am, please drop some other points in the comment section for people to learn from. So if you're if you're um, a new immigrant and you're willing to learn how to save money, please 
you may want to scan through the comment section because i know people will drop few comments and now you can save money as a new immigrant thank you so much guys for watching if you're yet subscribed you know what to do please subscribe like my video click on the notification bell so you'd always be notified when i put up videos on my channel share my videos with all your loved ones and i will see you guys in my next video thank you so much bye